Hello, everybody. So I was asked to put some more basic stuff on my page, and I figured, why not? My page is pretty empty these days. Let's go ahead and put up some tutorials on how to build stuff in Unity. Now, I won't be teaching you how to use Unity at a basic level. If you don't know what a scene is, or a prefab, or an inspector view, go watch some more basic videos and then come back here. I'm going to teach you how to actually start to build stuff in Unity. Uh, and that's, you know, knowing how to drag stuff into the game world is very different from knowing how to actually build stuff. The very first step is to get the controller in, in place. Uh, at least it is for me. When you normally image something in your head and you think of a game or a prototype, you normally think of it in terms of what the player will see. Uh, and So the first thing you're like is, oh, it's a first-person game, or it's a third-person game, or it's a 2D platformer, or it's an RPG with above, you know, a, a high camera looking down. You're going to want that interface in there very, 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 very first thing. Uh, otherwise, you won't be able to do anything. You can build anything you want, but if you can't interact with it, you won't have any feedback loop. You won't be able to figure out what's good and what's bad, and you won't be able to make any progress. So in this case, it's a first-person game, so I have just picked Unity's default first-person prefab, which comes for free when you download the Unity editor. Uh, there are a lot of other free interfaces that you can get for various other kinds of controls, whether they're 2D controls or 3D controls. Uh, and there are some that are also paid. In the end, you may have to tweak them or change them out, but you can get a fair distance before you run into those roadblocks. So, get yourself a free or cheap um, control that does what you needed to do, puts the camera in the right place and lets the player interact with it. In this case, it's just a first-person game, so... Uh, there's nothing to interact with. What are all those things? There are two basic ways to build levels. The first way is to use stuff. <laughs> so you can use Unity Cubes. I don't recommend it. Uh, if you do use Unity Cubes, I recommend that you flatten them out properly and put textures on them and stuff so you can tell what's a wall and what's a door. Uh, you can use the terrain. Unity terrain works pretty well if you need to do some kind of outdoorsy sort of environment. But if you're trying to build a level, I find that I really have the best luck if I use assets that already resemble what I'm trying to build. And in this case, I'm using the construction building pack, which is like 10 bucks or 5 bucks or something. And I'm just using a couple of pieces that happen to be the right size and shape. Now, these are very lightweight. They are cubes but they're textured with a uh, with a texture that I can read rather than just being you know flat surfaces the uh, these do not come with box colliders so in many cases you'll have to add box colliders yourself now there are a lot of packs out there that combine things together and give you like this is a hallway just drop the hallway in the problem is if those don't have colliders then you're going to fall through the hallway and if they and if you have to make a collider yourself for it, you're going to actually have to put in colliders for each piece, even if those pieces are all part of one mesh and you have to adjust every single collider manually. It's a huge pain in the butt. So if you're going to put together a level like this, I recommend putting it together out of wall and floor pieces with pillar and roof pieces optional, rather than out of prefab rooms. Unless, uh, unless you have like a really good prefab room pack, of course. And basically, you just grab pieces and move them into place. It's not, not too difficult to conceptualize. Now, you can hold control to do a, uh, um, a snap move, and you can adjust those settings down here in your snap settings. But what your real savior is going to be is holding V and then moving, because that's the vertex snap and that'll let you quickly move things directly into where they need to be and you should use this anytime you need to do that you don't feel shy about using it to put enemies in the game world or whatever but there I've put together a little bit of world now there's no reason not to just um, hit control D. after selecting them you can hit control D to duplicate and you can duplicate any number at once and then I can flip them over like this and Maybe V. Oh, darn it. V. Sometimes the V gets a little finicky, and you'll need to um, uh, you need to reselect it before it'll actually work. There. Now I've thrown together a hallway. 
Not exactly awesome, but it will do if you're trying to mock together a level. Later on in your development, you're going to need to replace these pieces with final product. Uh, and that's when having these mockups is handy because you can take these mockups and go into Blender or Maya and figure out how large they actually are and just basically paint over this surface with an actual 3D model that does the same things. And then, if you're doing it really fast and easy, you can actually just hide all of the meshes and use the existing mesh colliders and then you'll have a beautiful 3D model that you've built and you don't have to worry about the mesh colliders uh, getting in the way because you have the proper colliders already there. But optimization is, is far, far away. At this stage, you're just trying to mock something together and this is not the best way to do it. The only way, the only reason you do it this way is if you didn't have enough cash to grab yourself a real level editor tool. I don't know of any free level editor tools that are real good. If you do, let me know below. But uh, they're all about 50 bucks, and they're all really quite nice. Um, all, all of the ones with good reviews are quite nice. I'm going to go ahead and show you the one I've been using recently, which is Saber CSG. Uh, it's not particularly better or worse than any of the other options. It just happens to be what I'm using this week. So when you want to use Saber CSG, you just say game object create CSG and it pops it right there in the middle. Now this is a really great tool because it really lets you mock out the exact sort of environment you want. But if I hit play, it's not there. Well, with some of these level tools, you have to bake it first. Obviously the texture leaves a lot to be desired, but there are a lot of good things about this. You can change the texture all you'd like. Um, face, material, let's change it to uh, another material, like Ethan Gray, and then hit rebuild. Oh, I forgot to actually select the face. There. Now what is better about this as opposed to um, something where you're just dragging blocks around? Well, this is a whole lot better for a lot of reasons. Let's go ahead and take a quick look. So if I were to grab this face here on top, I could then do uh, an extrude and then take this and move it over like so. And then uh, duplicate and move it across to here. Notice how it auto snaps. Uh, and then what I can do is I can put in another duplication, move it to the middle, like so. Uh, and how about we change it to a subtract brush and then uh, rotate it so that it takes out a chunk of, come on, there we are. Hmm, I appear to have busted it. That's fine, just undo. And then we'll change it so that we'll, uh, we'll give it a free. Uh, how's free? No, that's too free. How about edge? Yeah, this is what I wanted. So now what happens when we rebake it? You can see that I have quickly made this entire thing uh, just in a couple of seconds there, and that was with me making some screw-ups. So it's pretty forgiving, and it works pretty well. Uh, now let's go ahead and duplicate the first brush again, and then move it uh, forward and down like so. And make this down here. Hit play. And you can see that it actually... Oh, forgot to rebuild it. And you can see that it actually obeys order of operations, which is what why I really like this particular editor. I think the others probably do by now, but back when I got this, I didn't see any other editors that had order of operations. So you can see that the subtract brush actually does not interfere with a brush, an addition brush that I put in later. And of course, you can use this to build anything you'd like, uh, towers or, or uh, columns or whatever. You don't have to use it to build flat surfaces. Um, so if we were to duplicate this and then bring it over, 
and build it up here, and it was in here. And then you duplicate that and move it over here. And you can see that, oh, look at that, it's off center. I can, I can, have, I can adjust these real easy though, which is why it's so great to be able to use this kind of tool. Uh, you don't have to worry about um, the pain of continually trying to readjust something that has a set UV amount. Uh, as you, you squish and you squash and they change their sizes, but the, the things you see on the side squish and squash too, so you end up with a wall that looks squashed. But this doesn't do that because it automatically adjusts the UV. Um, anyhow, we can go back here and duplicate it and then line it up properly like so. Uh, and of course there are a lot of other things we can do so we can grab the edge here that's the wrong edge this edge please thank you and then we can bake it and now we have a basic archway and it only puts it only took a couple of seconds to put together, and I can readjust it anytime I want without having to worry about squashing or stretch, stretching UVs, without having to worry about whether the collider works. Uh, and this is, I think, more or less the accepted way to build levels these days if you're doing a 3D map. If you're doing 2D, you have to do something else. Um, but feel free to give me your advice below if you think I'm wrong or you think I'm right. Uh, I can put a link down there to Saber CSG. I, I don't know whether it's the best one around. They're all pretty good, all the ones I've looked at, but they all cost quite a bit of dosh. So you're going to want to uh, take a look at the descriptions and the tutorials for every one of them before you fork out the cash. And unless, you know, if, you, if dropping 50 bucks doesn't mean anything to you, then feel free to buy as many as you'd like, obviously. But if that's quite an outlay, then you're going to want to examine which one you like best. Let me know if there's anything you want to see in this series. In the next episode, I'll probably talk about putting in interactive objects, uh, because that's a good way to start putting in your game objects. But I'm not particularly picky, and if you have something you want to know about and you haven't really figured out, feel free to ask away. Have a nice one.